So Angel, I don't know if you've ever had anything happen like this to you in a live webinar, but this is one of my first ever webinars and I thought it was going really well. And then I went back into the chat after a couple of minutes and everyone is saying like, um, you're sharing like the wrong screen. So I had been like sharing oh, yep. like, the blank window or something. No one had Big seen time. my slides. So yep. <laughs> that's why I always ask at the beginning. And it looks like folks can see and hear us. Again, everyone in the chat, just please let us know when you can see us and hear us. Now, the other thing I want to know is where in the world are you joining us from? Because one of my favorite things about doing webinars, and I'm sure it's the same for you at ConvertKit Angel, is just like the geographic diversity of everyone tuning in. It's huge. So many people from all around the world. It's honestly amazing to see. And I'm looking at chat and already we're seeing smoky SoCal. And if you're in California or the, that region, I hope you all are doing safe. Um, SoCal, Long Island, uh, New York City, West Indies, St. Louis, Missouri, Colombia, Germany, uh, Colorado. Wow. London, Buenos Aires, Texas, Lisbon, Florida. So we got people from all over the world. And thank you if you're joining us late at night. I, I see some people joining us from some far away time zones. So we're going to get started pretty soon. I'm going to turn this over to Angel. But before we do, I just have just important like logistics to really quickly show everyone. So I'm just going to really quickly share my screen. Now, when you're watching the webinar, you're looking at a screen that looks like this. You know, you've got your webinar, you've got the chat over here on the right. You can always type your questions in the chat and we'll be keeping an eye on them and there's gonna be a live Q&A at the end. Um, but the main thing to know here is if you're seeing anything be blurry or it's hard to read or it seems a little out of focus, make sure you're watching in high quality. So click the gear on the bottom right, make sure the quality is all the way up to 720p, all the way at the top. Now. If you want to see things a little bit bigger, if this text is a little bit small, just hit the full screen button down here on the right to make it full screen. Just know that when you do go full screen, um, you won't be able to see the chat, so you'll have to exit full screen to ask or answer any questions. Now, the last thing before we get started, please go ahead. We're going to have that Q&A at the end. We love curiosity. We love questions. But I'm going to tell you the answer to the most important question right now. There will be a replay you will get a replay. You're going to get it automatically. You won't have to do anything to get the replay. So I want your help here. If you see someone join the chat and be like, I've got to go early. Is there going to be a replay? Can you give me a hand and be like, yes, you know, Cam said there was going to be a replay. You're going to get one. So don't worry about it. You'll get it via email. So now it's 3.03 PM for me here in New York City. And Angel, I think it's time I turn it over to you. I'm really excited to see what you have to, to share. Amazing. Thank you so much for that awesome introduction, Cameron. I am super happy to be here uh, coming to you live, just ready to teach you all about email sales funnels and why that matters as the amazing digital course creators that you are. So without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and switch my screen over so that I can share the slides that we have prepared for you today to dive into all the strategies that we want to bring your way. Now, all of you are on here today to learn how to set up your automated email funnel for more sales in less time. This is specifically diving into email marketing for digital course creators, which that is all of you. Now, I know when it comes to starting your business, there are a ton of moving pieces from uh, marketing to email marketing to digital course creation to content creation, social media marketing. There's a lot of different moving pieces. And that's why I wanted to come to you today to share with you one of the most important moving pieces that will help save you a lot of time, a lot of energy, so that you can focus more on your creativity as the incredible creators that you all are. Now, for those of you that are just now joining us, I know Cameron gave a wonderful introduction on me earlier on. I just wanted to take the time to introduce myself again for anyone who's joining just a bit late. My name's Angel Marie. I'm the creator educator at ConvertKit and coming to you live is what I do every single week. I teach live workshops, live trainings, live webinars, live everything. That is literally what we do and we love it. We're just super passionate about growing personable relationships with you, being able to teach and educate you on proven strategies that we know work. So stay tuned because not only are we going to go over good strategies, we're also just going to have a lot of fun today uh, and at the same time giving you access to um, a live Q&A towards the end as well. So if you have questions, make sure that you're writing them down if a question occurs in your mind throughout this workshop, and I'd be happy to answer many of them live towards the end. Now, I also want to introduce you to Alicia. She's going to be in the chat with you. She is an incredible woman who's a part of our webinar team, our live trainings team. She is amazing as well, and she's going to be keeping up your energy in the chat, helping you out as much as possible, all that stuff. 
So between Alicia and I, we're going to put our brain power together to bring you a really great experience over the next hour. So definitely stay tuned for that. All right, let's talk about ConvertKit for a second. I know you heard Cameron mention ConvertKit. You heard me say, uh, me and Alicia work for ConvertKit. Many of you probably already know what ConvertKit is, which is great. But if you don't, I'm just going to explain that really quick just to make sure we're all on the same page. ConvertKit is specifically an email marketing tool or an audience building tool that exists to help creators like you earn a living online. We're passionate about that. That's our mission. That is our motto. And we actually do quite a few partnerships with Teachable because we both have that same mission of helping creators earn a living online through email marketing and creating digital courses. We are definitely 100% all the way here for you. Now, a little towards the end of this uh, training today, I'm going to dive into a demo because I want to talk to you about the strategies that I know work, but I also want to show you how to implement your email sales funnel strategy as soon as today, tomorrow, this week, whatever is within your capacity. So I'm going to be going over a demo of that so I can walk you through it step by step. And then we'll kind of close off the workshop with some last minute final details from Cameron and I. All right. So I want all of you who are watching us live right now, I want you to ask yourself and just think for a moment, what kind of course do you currently sell or what kind of course do you plan on selling. I know many of you are digital course creators and that can expand from a variety of different topics and niches and passions, which is so, so good. Cameron and I were just talking about the beauty in uh, how many people are watching this live from around the globe. And it becomes even more beautiful to see the amount and variety of different niches and courses that people create. So go ahead and put that in the chat. I'm going to have Alicia interact with you on that on what courses you plan on selling or what you currently do sell. Now keep in mind, whatever that is, whatever that course looks like, we are happy to have you here. I know that it is a Wednesday. Many of us are in different time zones because we're from all around the world. I for one am in Minnesota. I'm in my grandparents' basement because I'm visiting family. And that is the beauty of coming to you live. We can just have fun and grow relationships in that way. So we're super happy to have you here with us today. All right, let's talk about a little guide of everything that I'm gonna be teaching you today from beginning to end. The first point we're gonna dive into is why email marketing is necessary to bring course results. Then we're gonna transition into talking about the step-by-step -step process in starting your email list to pitching the sale. Beginning to end, I want you guys to understand what that pipeline looks like so that you can literally start building this out this very week. And then we're gonna dive into the third point, which is the tech setup that you need to make this happen in less time. Key word there is in less time. You are digital course creators. You are already uh, have all of your time packed with uh, to-dos and responsibilities and creating your course, creating your content. So many things that I know your mind is focused on. So when it comes to talking about email marketing and setting up your sales funnel, I wanna show you how to do this and why this works for you so that your business runs on automation, therefore creating more space, energy, and time in your day-to-day -day life. And we'd love for you to stick around till the end because Cameron and I do have a special bonus that we'd love to give you today just for watching the workshop and taking the time to put your development first. So let's circle back around to our first point today, which is why email marketing is necessary to bring course results in the first place. Now, in order to understand this, I want us to take a look at the initial business starter steps. That's what I always like to call it. What does it take to start your business? And just in broad terms, it really takes three main things. You're gonna need to share your voice with the world, share your voice to the public. You're also gonna need to build your audience so that you have a group and a community of people that you can talk to, you can grow relationships with, people that want to get results from you. And then of course you wanna sell your work. In your case, it's mostly gonna be those digital courses that you implemented into your business. Share your voice, build your audience, and sell your work. Three main components that matter when it comes to starting or beginning your overall business. Now, even though these are three main different components, you can accomplish all three by implementing one main thing and that's email marketing. 
Now, probably all of you understand the benefits that email marketing has. You know that it's a necessity. You know that you should dive deeper into it. But just to kind of give you some more clarity around that, these are all of the reasons as why email is effective, essential, and valuable to the business that you're currently building. Email is a key asset to connecting with your audience. It's also a key asset to gaining long lasting super fans and long lasting buyers. It's a way to speak directly to your ideal buyer at a time that's most convenient for them. Now, in this case, we're talking about the fact that when you show up in someone's inbox, they can open up their email, open up that uh, inbox at a time that's convenient for them, no matter what time zone they're in, no matter where they are at in the world. In comparison to social media, where there's so many algorithms that are at play and Instagram and Facebook get to pick and choose when your photo, when your status updates are shown to the people that are friends with you or that follow you. With email, it's different. That is your community. It's convenient for them. It's also a way to own your audience for that same exact reason I described before. With Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, they own your following. They own that. But your email list, you own it. That is your community of people that is yours. They go with you wherever you go. And it's also action oriented. In an email, your subscribers can click inside the email, they can respond to it, they can reply, they can forward it to their friends, they can click to purchase something from you. A lot of different things that can be done in email that is action oriented, which really is only beneficial for you and your business in the long run. So I wanted to share a couple of quotes from creators, digital course creators, just like yourselves, who implemented not only digital courses, but implemented email marketing and sales funnels as well. This is by Tulu Michaels. And Tulu had said, last week during my business anniversary, I launched a special access to my build and launch program, which was a course by the way, and she made 3K in four days. No mention on social media, no word of mouth marketing, just a few emails to less than 400 people. Now we also have Spencer here who gave us the quote of, I've made about $50,000 through my course since I started with email marketing. And last but not least, we have Deborah, who gave us the quote and said, 50 people bought the course right away and I made $3,000, about the same amount as one year of book royalties. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is it. This is how you make money online. Beautiful quotes by beautiful creators just like yourselves. And to break this down even further, we took Deborah's quote and kind of interpreted it through this visualization of her numbers. On the left, you can see how many email subscribers she had, and she owns a farm, so we even broke it down to what she taught people on, which was taking care of animals. And then on the right-hand side, you see her revenue breakdown. 70% of her online course sales came from pitching those course sales to her email list. She knew how effective, beneficial, and valuable it would be for her to take the course she created and email market it to her people. And I want all of you to know how to do that exact same thing, to dive into it, to feel good, to feel confident in those strategies moving forward. Now, I wanna make sure I reiterate this question too, because I get this quite a lot in my uh, different teachings and education that I do. It's a lot of creators ask, what's an email sales funnel? Many of you already know, which is great. Some of you might have uh, other circulating questions around it. So let's go ahead and highlight it. Again, just to make sure we are all on the same page. An email sales funnel is a way to nurture relationships, educate your audience, or nudge a subscriber towards making a purchase. That is your goal. So I want you to literally picture a funnel, like a, a funnel you'd use in a kitchen or a science project, and you are reeling your subscribers all the way down that funnel from growing them, bringing them into your email list, all the way down to them becoming your buyers, okay? So that is what an email sales funnel means. So here's an example of what that looks like. This is an example that I just quickly created for you so that you can see the layout of how it looks like specifically in ConvertKit. But at the very top, notice how it says meditation email course. This was a landing page that promoted a free email course to get people to join my email list, okay? So I created that landing page. I allowed people to come in. They joined my email list as the start of this funnel. 
And then from there, they are automatically brought through a series of emails that I've already set up. Now, this series of emails is called a sequence. So they go into a landing page, they're in my email list, and then they're brought down through a series of emails that automatically send for me. And then from there, based off of their actions in their emails, what they click, how they react and respond, I would tag them based off of those actions so that I knew where their different interests lied. And then from there, I've sent them through another series of emails based off of their interests. So all in all, an email funnel works for you automatically, so it saves you time, it will sell for you on the back end, and it helps you pick and choose the interests of your audience so that you speak to them directly at a time that's most convenient for them. Now, I know this funnel may seem a little bit more on the advanced side. I really just wanted to kind of give you a full view on how most creators I've seen have built out their very own funnels. But when I walk you through a demo, more of this is going to make sense on how to start this from beginning to end and how to know exactly what to do for your very own business as you go about selling those digital courses of yours. So email funnels help you save time, as we talked about. They bring those potential buyers through that smooth journey. The smoother the journey, the more trust you build because you're giving them easy access to enter in. Okay, so you're bringing them through a smooth journey. It uh, helps you direct potential buyers to your conversion goals. How can you convert them from subscribers to actual buyers? And then of course, it helps you sell your products or services. In your case, it's gonna be digital courses or anything else that you plan on selling and they help you track what worked and maybe what didn't work so well so that you know how to pivot or change up any components or parts of your email funnel. So I would recommend and definitely say that this is essential to implement uh, in your business as creators as you go about your entrepreneurial endeavors so that it saves time and it is selling for you already on the back end. You don't even have to worry about it. Now, Ashley gave us this quote when she set up her email sales funnel or infrastructure. And she had said, a lot of people mess up because they start building up these followers without an infrastructure of automated follow-up emails. If you set up your infrastructure, you will not only make that first dollar, but your first $10,000 as well. If this is Ashley's story, then I know it can very well be your story as well when implementing those email sales funnels. So let's dive into point number two here, which is the step-by-step -step process in starting your email list to pitching the sale. Let's talk through this step-by-step -step just to make sure that you guys feel good and confident to start creating your very own sales funnels. So let's look at this full-on guide that we've uh, created, this visualization here. How this process works, it's all gonna start off with you, the creator, who creates a landing page offering a freebie to encourage people to subscribe. From there, you send those subscribers helpful emails and build trust. And then you pitch your course to your subscribers when you're ready, okay? So that you can start generating passive income in that way. Now notice here, it doesn't just go straight from gathering subscribers and selling your course to them that middle piece is super important. Take the time to email them and build trust. Take the time to build personable relationships. Take the time to let them know about you, your knowledge, how you can help, give them more free gifts. That middle piece right there where you are sending helpful emails is so essential to eventually getting more people to purchase your courses when you're ready to share that course link and send it to your email list so they can actually purchase from you. So let's go ahead and focus on this very first step here. You creating a landing page, offering that freebie to encourage people to subscribe. Again, once they're in, once they subscribed, you send them helpful emails and then you pitch them on your course sale when you're ready. So if you're taking a look at that first step and you're like, okay, this sounds great, Angel, but I have no idea what I would offer as a free gift to get people on my email list, I want you to think about this. Think about the course you plan on selling and build your freebie off of that. Whether you already have a course out or whether you're in the process of creating your first digital online course, think about that 
And how can you build something for free off of that to reel people into your email list? This is essential. Reel them in first and be able to sell more of your digital courses. So what I wanna do is talk through five email funnels that are gonna walk you through five, or sorry, actually it's four email funnels, four email funnels that are gonna walk you through four different freebies that you could use to start off in order to get people gathered into your funnel. And then of course, to pitch them on the course eventually so you can start creating passive income. Funnel number one is to create a PDF as your freebie. When I say a PDF, I'm talking about a specific guide, checklist, ebook, planner, anything like that, that you are giving away for free as an incentive in exchange for someone taking time to join your email list. Now, at the end of this guide, checklist, or PDF, you share a link to your actual course. And then from there, they click the link to purchase your course. So it all starts with offering free value, offering free content first to boost your authority and to boost your credibility and let them know, hey, this is what I know. This is how I can help and bring you results for free. And that is a massive trust builder and a great entryway for them to purchase your course in the future. So here's an example of that by Ali Kazaza. Now, Ali is a creator just like yourselves, and she was a guest on the Balanced Life blog. Now, what Allie did was wrote a guest blog post on the Balanced Life blog where she linked in her landing page offering this freebie of hers. Now, when people read this blog, they clicked on the landing page link and were redirected to Allie's landing page in order to sign up for, for her email list in exchange for getting this free incentive. Now, in Allie's case, she was offering this minimalism starter kit, which went crazy, by the way. This worked so well for her. She was able to grow her email list. She gave them a freebie, but check this out. When people got this freebie, they would read this PDF. They would read this minimalism guide. And towards the end of this guide, Allie had a button at the bottom that said, I am done with clutter. Tell me more. When people clicked on that button, they were automatically redirected to where they could purchase Allie's minimalism course. So you see how that worked there. She didn't just right away pitch them on the course. She gave them a free offer first to not just grow her list, but to also pitch them on the course towards the end. Now, Allie had said when she did this, she looked in PayPal and had $25,000 in her account, which is a crazy amount, right? And my thing is, Allie did multiple different things in the email marketing space to understand what worked and what didn't work so well, being able to know where to pivot, when to pivot, and uh, how often she should make those changes. And she found that implementing this email funnel worked for her. Now, if this can happen for Allie, it can absolutely 100% happen for you too. Another thing to note here is that it's really important for you not to focus so much on the number aspect. Now, I know that it is our goal to create and generate passive income. I know that we want to make our sales. We want to sell those courses that we put so much work into. Trust me, I get it. But when you take the time to focus on one sale, be appreciative of that one sale in comparison to 100 sales, you then are learning to appreciate yourself, your work, and your uh, creative journey in itself, okay? So focus on your creative works and not so much the numbers aspect when you're just getting started and watch the numbers substantially grow over time. Now, if you love this idea that Allie did, but you're not necessarily ready to create a PDF, you can do this exact same thing that I'm talking about here with an email course. Now, an email course is a series of emails devoted to one topic that gets sent over a specific period of time. So for example, this is my landing page that I launched to my very own email list a while ago. And this landing page was promoting a meditation email course that I was offering at that time. All people had to do was sign up for my email list and they would automatically get access to this email course. So they'd sign up and they'd get access to a series of emails that I set up on the back end. Now, this is an example of an email sequence that I had sent out. Okay, this is my kind of the, you're seeing the behind the scenes of uh, this setup. On the left, you see all of the different emails that got sent out on specific days. 
And in the center here, you see the actual email content. Notice that very last email on the left towards the bottom where it says, want to work with me more. That is where I made my course sale pitch in that last email. So I allowed them into my meditation email course. I taught them something new every day throughout that series until that very last day where I was like, thank you so much for joining my five-day meditation course. If you wanna know more, you can opt into this uh, digital course right here, okay? And this was a great way to reel people in, get them excited, allow myself to boost authority so that they would eventually want to buy from me when I made that sales pitch at the end. Now, funnel number two is to offer a free sample. We talked about a PDF and an email course. Now let's dive into what a free sample looks like. A subscriber joins your list to get one module from your course. You then send a few follow-up emails, adding value and telling them where they can get more. And then of course you buy, or they buy your course when you've embedded that course in those few follow-up emails. So in this case, you have your digital course that you've built, which is beautiful, that's great. What if you just took one video from that course series and gave it away for free as an incentive to get people on your email list and to have an easier access to entry to purchase your course. They get a free training, they'll probably love it, they want more, and then from there, they'll buy from you. So this is something that I've also did a while back where I created a landing page offering a free training on creating a prosperous life. Now this training, I didn't just start from scratch. I recycled it based off of the course that I already published, a course that was already out there. I knew that I wanted to make more sales in this course. So what I did was I pulled a video out of that course, gave it away for free on this landing page, and then I would send them an email asking, what did you think? So all of those subscribers who got this free training, I asked, what did you think of this free training? If you wanna know more, if you feel like this helped you out, you can access my full Prosperous Mind digital video course right here and I would link in where they could purchase. Again, allowing yourself to offer free value, allowing them to receive results from you for free so that they can build trust, you can boost your authority, and therefore they buy from you once they've kind of gone through that entire process first. Now funnel number three is to offer a live workshop, just like the one that Cameron and I are on right now. When you offer a live workshop, you are not only taking the time to share your knowledge and to share your content, but you're sharing your voice, you're sharing your personality, you're sharing who you are. This is one of the main trust builders that you could ever do in your business is when you go live, because that is just as close, very, very close to meeting someone in person or face-to-face, -face, right? And that's a really big deal. Think about your favorite entrepreneur, your favorite actor. It is mind blowing, or it's amazing when you get to meet them in person because you get to ask them live questions. The same thing could work for a live workshop. You share who you are, you share your insight, they learn from you, and then of course, they buy from you after they watch the workshop. So you're gonna wanna pitch this free live webinar on a landing page so that they can register for it. And then from there on the live workshop, you teach content related to your course, and then you share how they can work with you more. And then they end up buying your service or your course on the actual webinar. Now you might've seen this with every course that, or not course, but every webinar that you sign up for to watch, you might see the sales pitch at the end, right? You implementing this into your business could be helpful in sharing your voice, who you are, and of course, allowing people to know about the course that's available for them to purchase. Now here's an example of this by Amira, who's an incredible artist. And Amira was pitching or promoting her free workshop, her free webinar on her website. So you can see that in the top right hand corner where it says free class, all people had to do was click on free class and they'd be redirected to Amira's landing page to sign up for her live workshop, which is so, so great. If you implement the same thing, you're not only gonna be able to build your email list substantially in that way, but you're also gonna be able to pitch your course to more people who take the time to watch your live workshop so they can learn and develop through the strategies that you teach them. All right, now we're on the last funnel to start off your email uh, funnel here, which is the advice giver. Now this is perfect for those who love all of the ideas I'm talking about so far, 
but they don't necessarily feel ready or they don't necessarily have enough built up content or preparation to start creating it, which is 100% okay. You can start with this funnel, which is called the advice giver. Now in this funnel, a subscriber is gonna fill out a former landing page to join your email list. Once they join, you are gonna write helpful tips and advice about your course topic, about what you're knowledgeable on, and work in public. That term work in public is really important because it means that you are not working in private, right? When you take the time to work in private, your creative works are to yourself, you're in your own zone, you don't wanna share anything about you or your life until you look like the expert. But when you work in public, you're bringing your audience along the journey with you. You're letting them know what you're currently doing, what helped you, your experiences, your successes, your downfall, downfalls, your travels, letting them know more about you. So you wanna continue to write helpful tips and advice while working in public. And then when you're ready to sell your course, they will buy it when it's ready to launch. But in this way, you already have a built up community of people that you've built up on the back end because you're constantly giving them tips, constantly giving them advice, and then they buy from you when your course is ready to go. Now, here's an example of that by Vanessa Yadarby. You can see here on her website, she has a form for people to fill out, but it's not necessarily offering a free gift or a PDF or a free sample because Vanessa maybe didn't have it ready at that point in time. But what she did do was she said, join 200 plus creatives who receive motivation in their inboxes. And I love this because she's letting people know she's gonna provide tips and advice on motivation. All they have to do is join. She can build trust that way. And when Vanessa was ready to sell on her service-based business, she would eventually do that. So that is definitely something that you could implement in your business as well. So I want you to think for a moment. We talked about four main funnels to talk about that you could start implementing this very week as you go about pitching your digital courses. Do you wanna create a PDF? Do you wanna create a free sample? What about a live workshop? Or maybe you just wanna remain in the advice giver position until you're ready to create the other additional pieces of content. So whichever funnel is calling your name, go ahead uh, and find yourself in the chat and let Alicia know she is in there with you. Let her get a feel for your energy and what you're most excited to create this very week. You're all very much capable of doing that. So let Alicia know. We would love to see your uh, responses and answers coming through. Now let's talk about point number three, which is the tech setup you need to make this happen in less time. Now this is that point where many creators are like, okay, Angel, you've taught me these strategies. This is great, but how do I actually do this? What do I need to make this happen? How can I do it by today, by tomorrow, by next week? So what I'm gonna do now, is switch over my screen because I wanna share a demo of ConvertKit and how you can easily set up everything that I just talked about in a matter of a couple of minutes. You can absolutely do this. It is super easy, streamlined, and I wanna walk you through that process. So stick with me, we're gonna walk through this. And then after the live demo, we're gonna transition into a live Q&A to make sure you're getting the help that you need in order to answer your questions. So I'm just going to switch my screen back over here so that you can take a look inside of my live demo account. Let's see here. Okay, perfect. So this is one of my demo accounts in ConvertKit, okay? Now, right away, I'm already seeing, uh, these are all of my subscribers coming in. It's gonna show me who's coming in on what specific days, how many subscribers I have total, my average open rate, a lot of things that ConvertKit will track for you in order to keep up with your entire community of people in your email list. But in order to build out your sales funnel, all you're gonna do is head to this automations tab because that's what you're doing. You are starting an automation. You want this to work for you automatically. You don't wanna worry about it. It's going to work for you on the back end. To start a new one, you're just gonna head over here to new automation. And then from there, you're gonna create a completely new one. Now remember, the very start of our funnel is to get people on our email list. So we wanna make sure this option is highlighted on joins a form, because that's what they're doing. They're taking action, they're joining a form, they're joining my email list to be opted in. So make sure it's on joins a form, head down here to plus create a new form. And then it's gonna ask you, how do you want to gather subscribers? Do you wanna build a form? or do you wanna build a landing page? 
Now, the difference between a form and a landing page is that a form is gonna be something that's embedded on your website or some sort of sales page to collect email addresses. A landing page is a separate URL that collects email addresses in that same way, but it gives you much more room because it's a single page. So it gives you an entire page to lay out the details of what you're wanting people to sign up for. Why should they sign up for your email list? Why is this valuable? So for this example, I'm gonna to go to landing page. From there, it's gonna bring me to where I can choose a specific template. A lot of options for you to choose from here. So definitely go with whichever one you feel is gonna be the best for you. Now I'm just gonna go with this one for an example and click choose. And then from there, it's gonna redirect you to where all of your beautiful customization comes into play. First things first is to name your landing page. That way you know exactly where to go back and find it in your ConvertKit account. So let's say I want to offer a free PDF. I have a Prosperous Mind course that I wanna sell, teaching people on how to live uh, in prosperity. So maybe I'm gonna pull apart a free sample of that by offering a Prosperous Life guide or a PDF of some sort. So in this case, I would just delete this and instead say uh, Prosperous Life Guide, okay? To let people know or to let myself know that this is the landing page I created. Now, when you click in all these different spaces on the landing page, you're gonna notice the right side changes along with it because it wants to coincide with exactly what you're editing, which makes it that much easier. Now for the headline, you would just delete and instead say something like, are you ready to live in prosperity? Are you ready to gain external success? And then down here, you would just add in additional content pieces, additional words to encourage them to sign up. Why is this valuable? What are they gonna learn in this free guide that I'm offering them? And then you, of course, can add an additional value insight right there. You're also gonna notice a plus button that pops up on your landing pages on the left. This plus button is literally going to be your best friend because when you click on it, there's gonna be plenty of creative components to add on these landing pages so that you can customize it even further, including the ability to add your social icons on these landing pages. And all you have to do is click on these individual icons and add in your Twitter URL or your Instagram URL or your Facebook, so on and so forth. A lot of different creative components you can add, including a gallery, an additional button, a video, even your Instagram feed, feel free to be as creative as possible as you'd like. You'll also notice this image that you can easily replace. And to do that, you're just gonna go to replace and you can upload an image that's in your desktop or your downloads, or you can even choose from Unsplash as well, which gives you access to hundreds of high quality, beautiful images that you can automatically pull into your landing pages. Now you could also integrate with Instagram where any Instagram photos you posted on your profile, you can easily pull them into your landing pages and it'll be right there for you. So a lot of options to embed your image as well. Down here, there's already a field for email address. If you go to this plus button, you can add in additional fields, such as a first name, just completely dependent on what is it, what it is that you want to add. So a lot of room to be creative here. Now, remember how we promised on this Prosperous Life free incentive. You wanna set up a way to deliver this incentive automatically without you having to worry about it. That way, anytime someone signs up for your email list, they are automatically getting this prosperous life guide right away in their inbox because you set it up on the back end. Super easy to do this. All you're gonna do is head to settings, you're gonna head to incentive, and then you're going to include the download of my prosperous life guide right here. Now keep in mind, let's say your freebie is a training, a free training, or it's, a, uh, it's gonna bring you or redirect you to a separate URL. In that case, you would just highlight it right here and copy and paste that URL to direct them to. But if it's a download, like a guide or a PDF we're talking about, make sure it's on download, choose a file, and upload that guide right there. Then you're gonna go up here to edit email contents. It's automatically gonna have a confirm your subscription wording in there. Just go ahead and delete that and instead say what your freebie is that they signed up for. So I would say something like prosperous life guide inside. Letting them know, hey, you had literally signed up on my landing page two seconds ago, automatically here's the email with the freebie that I promised. Now you can even customize this email. 
Thank you for signing up. I'm so happy to have you. My name is Angel. Let them know a little bit more about you. You'll also see that same plus button where you can add in more creative components to your email as well. Now you'll also wanna get rid of this confirm your subscription wording on the button and instead say, get your guide right here. That way they know to click on that button to be redirected to their free guide or to click on that button to be redirected to the video training URL you embedded. Now, whichever one you uploaded previously will automatically attach to this button. You don't even have to worry about it. A lot of really cool things that you can do just to set all of this up. So I'm gonna click save, make sure everything is good to go. And when I'm ready, when I feel like this landing page is good, I love it, it's great, I'm just gonna click save and publish. And then it's gonna bring me back to the start of my automation. So now it's showing me, I've created my prosperous life landing page to work for me how, for however long I want. What do I want to happen next? What do I want to happen as soon as people sign up? We already connected the prosperous life guide, but now we wanna connect our entire email funnel to make sure this is working for us on automation. All you're gonna do is head to this plus button. From there, make sure it's on action. You're gonna to go to email sequence. And then from there, I'm going to find my prosperous mind course pitch sequence. Now this might be something you've already created or you could just type in a brand new sequence that you might wanna create. So in my case, I might wanna say prosperous mind course pitch, okay? So I'm gonna add that and I'm gonna choose add action. So now it's showing me who's ever coming in this landing page will automatically be brought through a series of emails that I had already set up on the back end. When I click on this series of emails, it's gonna redirect me to what the emails look like. Now this is a brand new sequence. So all you're gonna do is edit each individual email that you create. And in this sequence, you can add in as many as you'd like in here to send on automation. So let's say I have six emails that I want to automatically send when someone joins my landing page. I would just easily set it up right here. And with every one, I would create the content. You'll notice that same plus button, remember, to add in those creative components. I would choose when I want each email to be sent from the previous email, make sure the status is active, and you're good to go. You've completely created your prosperous mind course pitch. Now notice that when they come into this landing page, they're gonna get that freebie from you, which is exactly what you want to allow them into your community. And then they're gonna be getting the series of emails, and your job is to make that final sales pitch on that last email. Something like, thank you so much for getting the guide. I'm so glad that I've been able to give you advice throughout this whole week. You can sign up here to get the entire Prosperous Mind course, which is pretty great. Now I wanna show you something else to add on to this funnel. All you're gonna do is make sure that you save everything that you've created. It's showing us our landing page, which is connected to an email series. What if I wanted to speak directly to those that purchased the course that was found in that last email that we created here. Really easy to do, especially if you've created your digital course with Teachable. Super easy because ConvertKit actually integrates with Teachable. All you're gonna do, head to this plus button, you're gonna head to event, and you're gonna click on product purchased. Now right here, it's gonna ask me to choose an integration. I already have Teachable integrated right here. And then based off of, uh, my Teachable courses, I'm gonna pull up my Prosperous Mind course that I created inside of Teachable and click Add Event. This is a great way to move those who purchased further down your funnel so that you can maybe get feedback from them. Create another email sequence asking for their feedback. Create an email sequence pitching them on additional courses because if they bought from you once, they probably will buy from you again. So a lot of great things that you can do to build on this funnel that will literally work for you on the back end. You don't have to worry about it. It works for you and it saves you time in the long run. When you're done with your funnel, just make sure the entire automation is from paused to on. It is now live and you're good to go. To begin making this uh, entire funnel work for you on repeat, just head back into your landing page, click share. You're gonna copy this landing page link and share it wherever you can so that every person who subscribes to this landing page link that you've shared will be brought down this entire email sales funnel. Super easy, super user-friendly, and honestly, one of my favorite things to do inside of ConvertKit, especially when I'm pitching people on my teachable courses. 
Now what I'm gonna do is just switch back over to my slide just so that we can dive into uh, what we'd love to offer you today to get started. And of course, diving into a live Q&A to help you out even further. So you probably already see this on, your, on what you're viewing this, uh, this webinar on or what you're seeing it in your email, wherever you're viewing this. We do wanna make sure that we give you access to a couple of things. We have specifically created a free course that you will find on the replay page. And this free course is gonna walk you through uh, how to start your email list, how to grow it, how to write to your email list, and how to sell to them. So it's this four part free course that we're gonna offer for you today. And then of course, we're gonna give you a free month of ConvertKit as well. All you have to do is go to convertkit.com slash teachable9 to try out ConvertKit for free, no credit card required, no obligation, this just gives you access right away to start playing around with your funnels, building those landing pages, allowing yourself to pitch your digital courses to people that are in your community on automation. Again, an entirely free month that we would love to gift you with just to try this out from us to you. Now you can sign up by clicking on that button that's on the page you're watching now or in the email, wherever it is that you're viewing it. We definitely got your back and we uh, would love for you to try this out within your creative endeavors. One more thing I wanna share with you, in order to communicate with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'm all about that. If you are wanting to ask me questions about ConvertKit or if you're wanting help with your sales funnel, I am all here for you. You can consider me your go-to educator for that. All you're gonna do in your ConvertKit account when you sign up is head to the question mark in the upper right-hand corner and click on join the community. When you click on join the community, you're gonna be redirected to our community base where you can create your profile, you can interact with different like-minded creators in this community, which is filled with thousands of them, by the way. And then on the left-hand side, you're gonna see a place where it says groups. When you click on groups, go ahead and find ConvertKit workshops. And when you find that workshops group, this is gonna be where you can communicate with me one-on-one. -on -one. I check this group uh, once a day on the weekdays. I am more than happy to help and guide you and answer any questions that you might need. So definitely feel free to uh, ask me as many questions as you like, and I'd be definitely willing to help you out as much as possible. Now, last but not least, I just wanna say a final thank you. You guys have stuck with us so far for about 50 minutes, which is amazing. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I hope that learning about email marketing sales funnel, how it works, how you can get it started and attach it to your digital course, uh, digital courses you create in Teachable, I really hope this was beneficial and brought you the insight that you were looking for. Now, let's dive into a live q and I know that you guys have some questions. I'd be more than happy to answer those and help, them, help you guys out as much as possible. So what I'm gonna do is give you some time to find your way to the chat and to ask any questions that you might have, okay? So I'm gonna give you some time to do that. I will go through as many questions as I can to answer them live. I'm also gonna have Alicia help me in managing those questions to make sure that we are uh, helping you out as much as possible. So I'm just gonna head back over to where you guys are viewing uh, ConvertKit on and see if we have any questions coming through. I'll kind of wait here to see exactly what kind of questions are coming in and how I can help in any way possible. All right, and Angel, thank you so much. Uh, so it, one thing that I would just like is before, any, while you're typing your questions, if you could just say thank you in the chat to Angel for putting together such a great presentation for us. Um, that was incredibly informative. And like I do, um, I do a lot of these workshops on a lot of different topics. And there's not that many where I feel like I'm gonna actually gonna go back and rewatch some parts of the replay. Cause I was like, wait, that was, that was pretty good. And this is, de this is definitely one of those. So any I love questions that. you That's have, awesome. any questions you have, uh, drop those in the chat. So, um, so Vivek says, he, Vivek asks, uh, I think he's asking about, you know, people who have purchased the course and how are they going to like come out of the subscriber list? Like, how, I, I think this means like, how are they going to fit into the sequence? And once people have purchased, how do you engage in them more? Yeah, that's perfect. So once someone purchases your course, a great way to engage with them, I always recommend is asking for feedback. Because at the end of the day, the more feedback you're going to be able to get, the more likely you're going to understand how to pivot or change up your course in the way that's necessary to get more people to buy from you. Feedback is essential, no matter if you're at the beginning stages of your business or the later stages of your business, definitely necessary. So I would recommend uh, asking for feedback. I'd recommend maybe pitching them on additional courses that you feel they would be interested in. This is something that a lot of top creators do is they specifically 
only send targeted emails to those that purchased from them in the past because they recognize and know that if that person bought from me, then they're more likely to buy from me again as long as I continue delivering value, building relationships, and bringing results their way within my business. So feedback, more uh, sales pitches, and of course, just showing your appreciation for them. Could you offer them exclusive gifts because they bought from you? Could you take the time to get to know them because they bought from you, right? So definitely taking the time to do that would be so, so great. It's a great question. Amy has a question in the chat. Um, she says, what are some of the best ways to share the landing page URL? And I do appreciate, this is just a small thing, I appreciate that you say, what are some of the best ways to do it? Because whenever folks ask me like for the best way, like what's the best way to create an online course? I'm like, well, there's, there's like a lot of ways and it really depends on this and this. So when I, some right. of the best ways is definitely more accurate. Yeah, 100%, great question. Uh, so some of the best ways, I would recommend would be to share your landing page link on the menu bar on your website if you have one. If you don't, that's okay. I'll share some more places. But the reason for that is because when people are on your website, they see in the menu bar that, oh, you're offering a free training, you're offering a free workshop, you're offering a free guide. People love freebies. So the more you're able to promote it wherever people are going to know more about your content, like a website, it's a great place to share that so they can be redirected to your landing page and sign up there. Pinterest is my personal favorite, something that I know works for some of the top creators in the industry. Many people feel that Pinterest is just for looking up recipes and do-it-yourself projects, and it is, but it's also an incredible search engine tool to use to your advantage as an entrepreneur. Because in this way, you can pin up a post promoting your content, promoting your free guide, promoting a free workshop, whatever you're giving, pin that up on Pinterest, and you can promote it on Pinterest too if you're wanting to kind of run some ad spends on it and see people sign up for your landing pages just to get access to that freebie. This is something that's worked for me beautifully. So I definitely recommend that you try that out. And then social media too. Uh, sharing it in the links in your bio, sharing it in your Facebook groups, sharing it in every single YouTube video in the description below. Share a link, let them know you're offering a freebie so they can go to that description. Anywhere and everywhere that you can think of to share that landing page, I highly recommend. And then, of course, the beginning ones that I mentioned previously are probably some of the best. We have uh, someone in the chat here, Vicky. And Vicky says, how many emails after someone gets a freebie is the best? Like, and what's the best way to uh, space those out? Great question, Vicky. Love that. So when it comes to emailing after you offer that freebie, you're always going to want to email your subscribers on a consistent basis. Now, I get that question a lot. Well, okay, well, what does consistent basis mean? It is completely dependent on you and your capacity, but I would recommend emailing them once a week. That way they're hearing from you every single week. They're getting results from you every week. They're getting tips from you every week. You are building trust with them every single week. So I would start off with them after they get your freebie, Allow them to uh, allow yourself to email them every week to uh, communicate and build that trust. And then when it comes to the best spacing of those emails, um, as I said, every single week, but as you build up more subscribers, I have seen creators transition into emailing every other day, especially if they have a specific sales pitch happening. They'll email every single day in that week to let people know that there's the sale, their cart is about to close, people should kind of get on and purchase that sale before it ends. Um, so it's up to you to kind of take time to play around with what works best when emailing your audience. But for now, I'd start with once a week. Great question, Vicki. Linda brings up the point. She says, I, I think that she could do, she says, I think I could do all four of the funnels, but her problem isn't is Wait, her problem, oh, I thought you said, Linda says, my problem is not converting my email list to buyers. So now I'm, I thought Linda said, I thought Linda, you said that your, pro, your problem was converting the email list to buyers. And I was like, what are some good ways to convert your email list to buyers? But Linda in the chat, I'm actually curious to know what what are you running into um, that, that we can help with? Um, yes. So Norman says, what are some of the best ways to actually create the, the content in your email funnel? Mm, I love that, that's good. Um, so I always recommend basing your email funnel content off of what you plan on selling. If that's a digital course, if it's a course on blogging, on making money, on self-development, mindset, whatever your course is on, 
make sure your email content reflects off of that so that you are sparking interest in the right areas. If your email content is on something entirely different from your course, then you're not necessarily going to be getting the buyers, the amount of buyers that you uh, imagine because you haven't really worked them up to get excited for a course that teaches them on something they're interested in. So make sure your content is always reflected in your funnel based off of what you eventually end up selling to them on. Uh, I would highly recommend that. And then of course, in the midst of that, ensuring that your emails aren't just about teach, 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 but to also get to know, get to let them know about you, who you are, your experiences, what you've been through, how you can help. Remember to bring them along the journey with you and your life as you take the time to teach them as well. Has clarified that her problem is not being able to convert the email list to buyers. So mm. that's actually a good question. How, if someone's kind of been sticking around on your email list for a little while, but it doesn't look like they're actually going to buy, what value do they have on your email list? Like, should you even maybe consider being removing folks from email list who haven't bought from you yet? Like, what are the best practices here? Yeah, great question. So it's important to realize that as many people that you might build on your email list, not all of them are going to purchase from you. Okay, and it's important to understand that upfront because an email list is your community where you are gonna find your buyers, but you're also still gonna have people that don't buy, that don't open up your emails, and that's okay. It happens to every single creator out there that has an email list. So after a while, after you've built up an email list, you've been emailing, you've been selling, and you see that people are not even opening up your emails. I wouldn't even start from not buying from you. If people aren't opening your emails at all, then you can go through what people call cleaning their list, where they're uh, removing cold subscribers. That's what cold subscriber means. They're cold, they're not opening your uh, emails at all. They're just kind of sitting there. So after a while, once you build up your list, you can go through cleaning your, uh, um, your email list to kind of clean out those that really aren't engaging. Uh, but I always recommend even before you do that, send them one more email, letting them know, hey, I've noticed you haven't opened up any of my emails in a while, that's okay. Do you still wanna be a part of this community? If you do reply, if not, I'll just go ahead and kind, kindly remove you. I've seen that happen a lot. That way you're giving them the option to still be a part of your community if they want, or you can already let them know that you're gonna kindly remove them uh, if they haven't bought from you. And as far as your conversion rates, right? And converting your email subscribers to buyers, it's all about plug and play. It's all about testing what might work versus what may not work as well. At the end of the day, every creator is different because every single human being on this planet is unique. You have your own DNA, you have your own voice. That means you have something incredible to share with the world that people, there's a group of people out there that want to hear from you, okay? So in that process, it's gonna take some time to test out what works and what doesn't. And if you feel like you're having trouble getting people to buy from you, I would recommend maybe taking a step back and not pitching a sale for just a little bit so that you can take time to reestablish trust and relationships with them. Can you offer them more free gifts? What if you took the time to hop on a call with your subscribers and ask them questions or let them know how you can help them? What if you took the time to get to know them and they took the time to get to know you? Taking that step back can definitely help reestablish your business and set yourself, set yourself up for success in getting more people to buy in the future. Great question. So we had a, a follow-up question here from Vivek who wants to know, how do you actually prevent people who have purchased from you know, getting the same sales messages again and again and again? I know, I know it feels weird when I've already bought something and I see that Facebook ad being like, hey, you know, there's a discount now. I'm like, wait, what? So right. I'm curious how that happens. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So this is something that you could do through tags in ConvertKit. Um, now that's going to be a little more on the advanced side. But let's say you have a sales funnel, right? You can tag subscribers to come out of that funnel so that they're not opting back into that same thing, getting the same emails. Okay, so tags work in a, in a variety of different ways. Um, Alicia, if you could do me a favor and go to help.convertkit.com and find a couple articles on how to tag subscribers and drop them in the chat, that would be so great. That way people can get a feel for those articles, get a feel for what they can do in ConvertKit to get started so that they're not constantly seeing people get these uh, same exact emails um, 
in in the funnel and therefore it feeling super repetitive. Yep, makes sense. So we're getting fairly close to the end of our time. It's just past the hour here. So uh, we'll take maybe like a couple of last minute questions here in the chat. So while one of the last questions we have coming in here, I think we'll like maybe take two or three more. Vicky says, how difficult is it to bring your current email list to ConvertKit? Uh, do the subgroups hold up? I'm assuming referring to like the terminology from the current system. And kind of on that, one, one question I get a lot, you know, uh, Angel is working with people who are considering, like they're coming to Teachable, they say, I've heard all these things, you know, I've heard about ConvertKit and I've heard about this and that, you know, why should I pick ConvertKit out of all these or why should I switch to ConvertKit? So I guess maybe if you could touch on the question about actually how hard it is to move your list over and all the tags and stuff like that. And then, you know, why yeah. you would make that switch in the first place. I, I think that'd be great to hear. That is such a good question. Um, so back to your original question, Vicki, on how difficult is it to bring your current email list over to ConvertKit? Not difficult at all. It is so easy. Literally all you have to do is upload a CSV file, which you can get from your previous provider, upload that into ConvertKit and it will automatically take care of it for you and upload every single subscriber you have. Alicia, if you can drop the link on how someone can uh, convert from a different provider, uh, that would be great just so that they can find that article as well. Again, it's super easy to convert and to bring your people um, all the way over. And when it comes to the subgroups, I'm assuming the subgroups terminology is kind of the same way as we refer to it as segments, where you're kind of breaking your audience up into different groups. You can absolutely recreate those segments in ConvertKit and kind of drop them back in there, okay? So a lot of different things that you're gonna be able to do to easily convert. And we also have an incre incredible customer support team that can help you and walk you through that process as well. Now, just to kind of give you some insight on the difference between ConvertKit and other email service provider, the main thing that I would say, and not just me, but the main insight I'm getting from other creators who use ConvertKit is our customer service team. We are very responsive. We wanna help you out as much as possible. We offer tons of trainings and podcasts and live webinars that I do every week, teaching you on different uh, business strategies along with ConvertKit strategies. Uh, we are just 100% here for you. And in my webinar slides where I showed you how you can join the ConvertKit community, that gives you access to a community of creators that you can connect with who also use ConvertKit. That's also what makes us super unique. It's a free community. You can collaborate with them. You can partner with them. You can get help. You can get one-on-one -on -one help from me. We're all about uh, being personable as possible and making sure that you know and recognize the faces behind the ConvertKit brand so that uh, we are helping you and guiding you out throughout that entire process. Uh, we also have an amazing deliverability rate with ConvertKit, meaning that you have a 99% chance of appearing in someone's inbox rather than it going to spam and other email service providers uh, might have lower percentages than we do. And that's because we have an entire deliverability team that works on that, that makes sure your emails are being seen, they're being opened. We just wanna manage them and make sure that you are set and good to go. Uh, so yeah, I would say those are the main differences. Great question. First of all, uh, Shalom in the chat says, very helpful session. I'll be trying out Convert Can Teach Well next week. That's awesome and great Amazing. to hear they're really diving in. Um, so Norman in the chat says, what do you recommend when starting out? Is it like a landing page or a form or how, I, how do those fit together exactly? Yeah, that's great. Um, I would recommend creating a landing page to start out. Okay. And that's because when you create a landing page, a website necessarily isn't needed. You can just share that landing page link wherever, whenever you can. Um, but at the same time, when people start off, they do create both one form and one landing page at least. That way they have both options. Now a form really only makes sense if you have a website or some sort of sales page elsewhere that you can embed. But at the same time, landing pages have much higher conversions to get someone to be a viewer to a subscriber because it's that bigger picture feel. They're getting more information on why joining your email list or why getting access to your freebie is valuable rather than it just being a form and saying, join my email list and having people sign up, it's a landing page that says, get this freebie. It's an image of it. It shows more details and then they have the option to sign up. So I definitely recommend a landing page starting out and sharing that where you can for sure. 
Coming back in here, uh, Vivek says, thank you so much for Teachable and Angel. A great learning, really appreciate it. Um, awesome. Which is always have great feedback. Um, so, and Norman in the chat is asking a different Norman. There's two Normans. Um, other it. Norman <laughs> says, what uh, can you do A-B testing? And Pam is already very helpful in chat says A-B testing is available on ConvertKit. But could you explain for folks what is A-B testing? Maybe if you haven't heard of it and how ConvertKit would utilize that. Absolutely. So A-B testing gives you the ability to test out different um, landing pages or different email subject lines to help you in recognizing what's going to convert the best. So for example, I personally do A-B testing on almost every single one of my emails that I send out. And I do that A-B testing on my subject lines because at the end of the day, I don't know which subject line is going to encourage people to actually open up my email more. So I'm going to write two subject lines, A, B, two different subject lines. And what ConvertKit does is it sends subject line A out to a certain percentage of your audience. Then it sends subject line B out to a different percentage of your audience. And then ConvertKit will pick and automatically choose which subject line performed the best. And it'll take that and send it out to the rest of your community or the rest of your email list. So this is a beautiful way to kind of do that research and finding out what does your, do your subscribers love to hear? What is going to get them engaged? What is going to get them to open an email? And as you notice the subject lines that perform the best, you can start doubling down on subject lines similar to those rather than worrying about things that your audience isn't going to be engaged with. So yes, ConvertKit offers A-B testing. Uh, if you want more information on that, you can find your way to the ConvertKit workshops group in the community and ask me. I'd be more than happy to help you and guide you through that for sure. That's great, Angel. And I guess we'll end with one last question here because we're coming up in the last minute. So Shalom says, what sort of team do you need to run all of this, even with the automation? And mm -hmm. you know, I know that you can get started as a, as a solopreneur, but as you scale, is ConvertKit the kind of thing it can scale with you? Absolutely. Yep. ConvertKit can absolutely scale with you no matter uh, what your subscriber list reaches, no matter what that number is. If you want multiple admin managers on your account, once you work your way up to having a team, ConvertKit can definitely uh, give you access to that. A lot of great things that you can do that ConvertKit can scale with you. Uh, and just kind of going back to Cameron's original point there is when it comes to starting with your automations, you can do this as a solopreneur. This is something that I've done in my business. I know Alicia has done it in hers. I know so many creators who have started off as solopreneurs. They didn't have an assistant, a team, nothing. And they did this from the ground up just by easily creating their automations. Now, as your business grows and as you're gonna wanna begin to create more automations, that's where you're gonna wanna consider bringing on an assistant or a team to have more admins inside of your email marketing strategies. But uh, when you get to that point, you can absolutely reel them in. For now, I would just focus on your beautiful works as solopreneurs and being able to build out your automations, which you can definitely do solo for sure. That's great. Now, any last words for folks before we wrap this up? Uh, and anywhere, anywhere they should catch any more in info, resources, et cetera? Yeah, of course. Uh, Alicia, if you wanna drop our trainings page link, that would be great. Uh, ConvertKit specifically has a trainings page that's dedicated to our trainings, our webinars. You can listen to podcasts on there. You can get access to free guides and free resources that we have. We're all about helping you. So I'm going to have Alicia drop that link so that you guys have access to that um, and you can watch more trainings. And other than that, I just want to strongly encourage you in the fact that when it comes to email marketing and creating digital courses and all of these moving pieces, I know it feels heavy. Trust me, I don't, I don't just say that. I know this because I've been through it in building out my own side hustle, but you absolutely can do it. I just recommend taking it one step at a time. Start with building one landing page promoting a freebie. Start with creating a freebie based off of the digital course you created using Teachable. Start with one and take it from there. You don't have to have everything figured out before you start selling or before you start growing an audience. You're gonna learn. You're going to grow. You're going to pivot where needed over time. The main and the most important piece is to just start and be confident in sharing your voice and your works with the world. All right. And that's a fantastic message to end on. So on that note, everyone, you are going to get the replay from this automatically. Any other questions, please feel free to reach out to the ConvertKit team or the Teachable team. And we hope to see you in on the other side. All Absolutely. right. Absolutely.
Take care, everyone. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Bye.